Ford. Hey. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Not only a Tesla, but a full self-driving beta Tesla. Ooh, really? So this is one of the cars that has the complete AI from Tesla. <laughs> I'm a bit of a data science geek. Nice. I collect uh, info from every trip I do, including how many times it fails, the reasons why. That way I can chart the progress from software patch to software patch. Wow. So how did you like... Did you have to like sign up to do the beta testing or were they just- Kinda, yeah. You had to request access uh, once you have full self-driving, which is what you can either buy for 12,000 or subscribe to for 200 a month, which is what I do. Yeah. And uh, back in September, we all got the famous button, you know, that everyone wanted to request access to the FSD beta, which is what this is. Yeah. And uh, after about two weeks, the first 1,200 people got in with perfect scores. I was one of them with the 100 out of 100. And I've had it since then, so October 11th. Cool. Has it been going pretty good, or does it have issues? Like Lots of issues. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been interesting to watch it progress. Yeah. So, like right here, for example, it's slowing down because it sees this vehicle. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to jump over to the next lane or just wait, because there's a car coming up to our left. So it's just waiting because it's That's trying to be safe. That is... There we go. That's pretty cool. So you can tell the car is in control with the blue steering wheel and the blue line. If I take over by touching the brake, it all grays out. So now you can tell I'm the one driving. Just so, you know, I'm not messing with you. <laughs> That's cool. My parents used to have a Model S and I drove oh. that. I did like a two hour drive in that and the autopilot was amazing. It is, yeah. And, and probably an older S, right? Like a it 20... was older, yeah. Yeah, so there was a lot of praise for Autopilot 1 yeah. is what that was called back right. when they were still partnered with Mobileye. And that system was really good at what it did, which is just really superior lane keeping, lane changing. Yeah. Um, Tesla and Mobileye kind of had a nasty divorce mm. and Tesla started developing all their stuff in house. Very good, it sees the pedestrian. Oh wow. Oh yeah, it sees all of the, the cyclists, pedestrians, everybody. That's so cool. Now here we go. <laughs> Probably makes your job easy though. <laughs> you would think, but it's actually the opposite. <laughs> Cause I'm kind of like a driver's ed instructor with yeah. a bunch of 15 year olds kind of oh thing. Like, I gotta make sure that the vehicle doesn't do something dumb. Yeah, truly. I was so nervous, like, at first. I was like, I don't trust this. And then, yeah, yeah. After, like, an hour, I was like, oh, okay. Change it's, lanes. <laughs> it's really weird to give up control. It's, yeah. it's a strange thing. And for me, I'm a lot less risk tolerant when I have customers. <laughs> yeah. By myself, I'll be a little bit more gutsy and let it do more things that might be a little sketchy. <laughs> Does it have issues, like, when it can't see the lines? Because sometimes, like, they're in this, the lines on the street, like, are faded or mm. they're So, like yeah, the, the old build, which is now what we're on, you see the colors have gotten a lot simpler. This is probably what you're used to seeing, yeah. just the kind of gray and blues. Yep. This needs lane lines to function, and on the highway, it actually needs my permission to change lanes. Like, it either needs yeah. to feel the weight of my hand on the wheel, or I give it permission with the stock. Depends on how you have it set up. But the beta, which you saw with all the colors and everything, the dev build, that operates without lane lines. It doesn't need it. Like, residential streets, it'll stay on the proper side. It is a lot of fun to be able to see kind of the forefront of this type of engineering and watching yeah. it grow. We've it's definitely like, had some software where it goes backwards. Yeah, I mean, Tesla's kind of at the forefront of it right now. Yeah, yeah, this, this, this FSD beta is far and beyond pretty much anything anyone else is doing to this level because this is a general approach, meaning like this car is operating here, but this software is also operating in Canada and New York and Florida. You know, eventually it'll make its way to China and other parts of the world, whereas a lot of the self-driving companies they're like very, very geofenced, focused, pre-mapped with LiDAR down to the millimeter, yeah. and they cannot deviate. Versus this is like, oh, just everywhere. <laughs> Go. The only thing that like would irk me when I was driving it is when someone, like if somebody cuts you off, like you end up, or like somebody like merges in front of you really quickly and you have your lane keeping set as like a further distance, yep. it would break really hard. Oh yeah. That, you would have, uh, so I wouldn't even use this beta with you if I was still on, uh, like, say, 10.2 or 10.3 back in October, November, because there could be a person where that SUV is, yeah. and the car would be like, human, and, like, hit the brakes, <laughs> and slam, like, why? Ow! I, I was getting marks on my neck Jeez. from all of the heavy braking. Yeah. That totally sounds like you're teaching a child. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that's how it feels. Exactly. <laughs> And now it, it's garnered a lot of finesse and a lot of, like, even just coming to a stop with these cars would be like, last minute, whoa. Yeah, that kind of felt like you were doing it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's getting a lot more human in how it operates. So I heard like a lot of like news stories about people like crashing their Teslas because they had them on like auto pilot or some cell 
self-driving mode mm -hmm. and they sat in the back seat. So would it be this like this beta test that you're doing? Cause, like, wow, none of them have this beta because <laughs> they would be kicked off so fast. <laughs> um, the other one like doesn't let you lift your hands off the steering wheel. It like yells at you after like a few seconds. Yeah, unfortunately, people figured out ways to kind of trick it. It's being a little weird here. It doesn't like the cones. That's what's yeah. happening. Yeah. Okay, there we go. We got over. That's good. Good correction. Good correction. So, and, and, and very foolishly, Consumer Reports went out and kind of showed everyone how to hack the system. Because basically, I mean, I'm not going to repeat it because I don't want someone to watch like one of my videos and then think like, oh, he's telling us how to hack autopilot. Yeah. It's, it's super unsafe and it is on the driver still. So anybody who gets a Tesla gets autopilot of any sort, you sign waivers that you are responsible. You need to be the one to take over. In fact, so when I engage this message here that pops up every time, says, please keep your hands on the wheel, be prepared to take over at any time. Yeah. So there are a lot of built-in, um, like legalese, waivers and such. Yeah, and I have zero tolerance for people that abuse the system. That's what ends up setting us back because even though it's the dumb owner, the regulatory bodies are looking at Tesla like it's the system's fault. Yeah. And it's not. <laughs> I mean, they are definitely taking a risk by letting people like myself and about a hundred thousand of us now have this level of the tech. Mm -hmm. So far, fingers crossed, there hasn't been any accidents on the beta. It doesn't like downtown, and this yeah, is kind of getting into I that, that just about to ask area. You know how it preemptively knows whether you're going on a one-way street. Like, that it, it can maps? see. It, it can. It knows through maps with the direction, and it has some signage ability to read. Um, I don't know if it can read the one way, but it definitely knows not to go the wrong way in a one way. The left side. Oh, I heard you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, it's like my bad. All right. Perfect. Well, it actually got us here without me taking over. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Little rough around the edges, no, but that was so cool. we got you here safely. <laughs> Pretty smooth. I like yeah. It. Oh, my pleasure, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Now, getting out of this one's kind of weird. Hold that button down and push the door at the same time. Got it. Perfect. Cool. Thank, Thank you, man. you. Yeah, have a wonderful night. Take care. Thank you. Those are some good customers. I love it. Fun, questions asked, had a great time. That was good stuff. Uh, so we're in the self-driving now. You can tell because of the blue wheel and the blue line. If I take over, it grays out. That way you know I'm not messing with you. <laughs> but yeah, this is the beta. Actually, it'll look better if we put it in day mode. If it's not too bright. Shows how much you can actually see. Dang. All the people, cars, cones, cyclists, dogs. I don't think it sees cats. It doesn't like cats. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Neither do we. <laughs> there we go. Has there been any maintenance with it in those miles? Outside of uh, aside from tires, all I've had to do is replace my upper control arms recently because they started to squeak. And that was like 200 bucks. Yeah, done in one day. Is the Cybertruck next? That's my next one. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're still about a year away, yeah. aspirationally from production. We'll see. I was going to say. So I don't think it's going to do what us humans would typically do, which is to kind of cut along these guys. It doesn't like turn lanes that aren't like full designated turn lanes. I, I mean, understood. It'd be kind of scary if it did, but... How funny is that, right? <laughs> this person walking. It's doing it all with vision. It's all cameras. I was going to say, she was actually... Wait, where right. are the cameras? So there's three in front of my um, rear view mirror that are looking forward. There's one in each of the B pillars on the side, and then there's one under each mirror and then the rear for a total of eight. So it's looking all around in full view. So like, did it just decide to change lanes? Oh yeah, turn signal, lane change, nav, everything. This blue line is basically the intention of the car. When it grays out, that's why you can tell that it's actually stopping, and I'll use that as an indicator that, yeah, it sees a stop sign or a stop light. Because uh, when it's solid, it's accelerating, and when it's grayed out, it's it's stopping. And you can see where it's pointing to go and showing its lane change. It got a little on the brakes there because of all these cars. But it's actually... So you couldn't take a nap? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, the goal is that eventually with beta testers like me helping get the system to that point, then one day, yes. But we're, we're not there. The technology will probably be ready long before the regulations are. And the politics of it are going to take years. Yeah. And here we go, full left turn onto the highway. Once we actually get on the highway, the beta is going to disappear and it's going to revert back to what we call the public build, which is what Tesla owners just have. The highway stuff's been around for years. Huh. Eventually, we'll get the full code rewrite where it'll all be on the same software, which will be really nice. Pretty much once we jump on, there it is. Now we're back to a much less information heavy display. Yeah. So do you have to like update it? 
So I, I can pretty much just wait for the updates. Uh, Tesla puts them out whenever they're ready for the next patch. And it can be anywhere from two to three weeks to a month or two, depending on how the update's doing with all the beta testers. Because now there's about 100,000 of us. That's my guesstimate. The official number we last got was 60,000, but they've recently added Canada, or at least parts of Canada, to the beta. Do you so. get anything for being part of that, or is it just like... No, just the privilege to be at the forefront of this tech and see what it can do. It's, uh, man, when I tell you that people were gunning to have it, it, it there's no shortage in desire yeah. to be able to test the system. Do you have just like the standard or like the, like the long range? Like how many miles does it last? Oh, charge? so this is a standard range plus before a lot of the changes. So yeah. brand new, my mileage is rated at about 240. Okay. Uh, real world now, after all the driving I've done, is about 215, 210, 215. Good. And how long does it take on a full charge? If you were to go to like... It's about 25 to 30 minutes on average. That's pretty much all the cars across the board because it, it tapers. So like when you're at a really low state of charge, you fill up a lot faster than you do yeah. when you're at a higher state of charge. It all kind of balances out around that 26 to 31 minutes. But the cars range from now the base model gets 270 miles and you can charge it to 100% without worrying because they're on an iron chemistry which is different than this, this is on a nickel cadmium chemistry. So most lithium ion batteries, whether it's your phone, laptop cars, you don't really want to fully charge or fully deplete. Yeah. Otherwise you'll, you'll lose some battery health. Hmm. But with the iron chemistry, that's different. You can actually charge all the way to hundred percent and it can handle it. It doesn't really suffer the same issues. And the long range cars are getting anywhere from 350 to 400 miles now. Jeez. That cyber truck will hopefully do about 500. <laughs> we'll see. They've recently taken down a lot of the specs as they kind of re-engineer a lot of things, adding four-wheel steering, taking away the door handles, all kinds of stuff. Are they redesigning the whole look of it or no? No. No, no yeah, the truck's going to look like that. It's just going to have more tech because uh, at the Cyber Rodeo recently when they opened the Texas factory, we got to see the most recent version of Cybertruck, you know, with the mirrors, with the really gargantuan wiper blade that no one really likes, but you kind of have to have... And we actually got to see the four wheels articulating in a video showing it moving, which makes a truck, you know, the size of an F-150 be able to turn like a tiny little Civic because you have all four wheels being able to turn. So it can do its little crab walk thing that you might have heard with the Hummer, but also be able to take really tight corners and really help with maneuvering a trailer. Jeez. So I'm, if you can't tell, a little excited. Yeah. That'll what's, be fun. What's the, uh, like the base? Is there, is it still like a base model? Originally, yeah, and that's kind of a big question now, too. So when it was unveiled, you know, you had your single motor rear wheel drive, the long mo long range dual motor, and then the tri-motor, which was just the big baddie. And the tri-motor might sound familiar because the Plaid Model S and X have that, you know, the quickest Teslas in the world right now. And it was a range of 39.9 with the single motor all the way up to 70,000 for the tri, which is really good and competitive in the truck yeah, market. Yeah, it's like cheaper than Aren't the new Hummers like yeah. 100 grand? Yeah, the Hummer is, is ridiculously priced and it's almost 10,000 pounds. Not really the mark of efficiency. But with the talk of there now being a quad motor option, a lot of us are speculating that the, the single motor and the tri motor might go away. And this is all speculation. But Tesla likes to run lean and have simplified production, so it would make a lot of sense that they just had the dual motor four wheel drive and the quad motor four wheel drive. Jeez. And if I had to guess, that'd probably be between 60 to 90 thousand maybe even a hundred thousand on the quad motor is that the right you go if i can i mean that's a lot of money that is like yeah. i'm a regular guy I, <laughs> I don't know maybe if i come youtube famous you know, we'll see like, but i'm not counting on it i i was i might be able to make the tri-motor work at 70 it's gonna take a lot and we'll see i mean still a year yeah. but a quad motor at 90 plus is going to price me out of that for sure. I'll, I'll have to get the dual motor, which I mean, it's still going to be an amazing vehicle. Oh, yeah. But it won't have the 500 mile range. It'll probably have around 350. Yeah. Still a lot more than this. Yeah. But when it comes to trucks and like towing and such, you really want the highest range because towing will cut your range in about half. Yeah. That's what a lot of people see when they tow things behind like the Model X or the Model Y that my wife has. I mean, that 300 miles of range becomes 150 real fast. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the same thing happens to a gas vehicle, but you can carry extra gas tanks and such. And a lot of the heavy utility work life side of the world is going to be interesting to see the EVs try to keep up with that. That's why I'm so excited for like the F-150 Lightning, the Cybertruck. Um, I don't really care about the Hummer. I think it's kind of a joke. 
but the Rivian is another really great vehicle, but it's a startup starting at $90,000 and it's kind of like a Tacoma versus an F-150 or a Tundra to be more, you know, in the same car company line. But I'm pretty stoked. I mean, the F-150 is going to get a lot of people's attention because there's a lot of like loyal, you know, Fords. Yeah. So that, that would be my own father. Like, Cybertruck looks cool to him, but he would never own it. Yeah. I'm a total tech sci-fi gaming geek car guy at the same time grew up with trucks too so it's like all of my worlds mesh into one with that crazy cyber truck you got it i know this construction come on there we go yeah now we're back on the beta all these crazy humans and here he goes again might as well just let him pass hey that nice i didn't do that that was surprising it's like what the crazy little kia run by and here we go there's another crazy human you can kind of feel where it's still a little yeah. abrupt. Nowhere near as bad as my first drive with 10-2 when I was like dying in my seat, like my heart was going through the roof. It's like, I don't know, being on a crazy roller coaster for the first time. Yeah. I mean, knowing that I can take over in a split second is cool. And now after 300 hours on the system, I'm pretty seasoned to what it does and I've kind of learned its mind in a way, if that yeah. makes sense. So I can kind of feel when it's getting, or losing its confidence or when it might do something dumb and then I'm just here to grab it. I definitely wouldn't run this with customers if it didn't, if I wasn't confident that it was safe enough. Yeah. Uh, amidst all the stuff I was doing, when I hit that button, that sends that back to Tesla as a priority message. Like, hey, car did something really strange here, like above what a normal intervention would be. That way they can actually see that as a priority. This is uh, interesting though. Well, we're getting a red anyway. All these pedestrians everywhere. I feel like that's what I would be nervous about. Not necessarily yeah. like just driving, but being in the city with random people crossing the road yeah and it does write on reds which is like what i think it's trying to do now but we got mr white shoes here actually in the road i think i'm just gonna take over since this car is passing and we have this opportunity i can go wide thanks sir 